We still have a few more people joining us, but we'll get started to keep everything on time. So uh, one of our guests goes straight from this conversation. Uh, wait, 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 let me actually read here. Um, so yeah, one of our guests goes straight from this conversation to his live radio show. Uh, and first, let me welcome everyone and thank you for joining us at our Fan Experience webinar today. And now, uh, let me go ahead and hand this over to uh, Ken Peterson to kick off the conversation. Perfect. Thank you, Esther. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Ken Peterson from Question Pro. I lead our experience function, which includes thinking about customer experience, uh, employee experience, patient experience, uh, just about any experience you can think of. Um, uh, one, uh, one aspect, and it, probably at times some of my favorite um, as a sports fan is talking about the fan experience. I've worked with Steve in the past and um, you know, with everything going on in the world, I thought this would be a little more fun topic, but also a little timely um, as sports is starting to reopen. I, I know uh, there was a UFC fight over the weekend that had no fans at it. Um, I recently uh, was talking to some people at the Premier Lacrosse League. They got this um, betting deal with, uh, uh, I think it's called Genius Deal is the, the betting company and they're gonna be uh, actually hosting a full tournament without fans, uh, but at the same time, uh, try to engage the fans a little bit more, make the experience a little bit different by incorporating a, a bet, betting part of it. So uh, let me uh, progress here to the next slide here. Um, I mentioned myself, but I also want to introduce my guests. First, uh, I'm thrilled to introduce Brady Hull. Um, he uh, has many uh, roles at, oh, sorry, at, um, he has many roles at KFKA. Probably my favorite, of course, is the host of the whole show, which is sports focused. Um, he's used to uh, dealing with uh, question, tough questions from fans, so don't hold back. Uh, I'm sure he'd be thrilled to answer some tough ones. Um, so Brady, you wanna add anything else? No, I, I'm honored to be a part of this. Uh, when you, uh, you asked uh, us to be involved in this uh, a few months back, I was very excited. You know, it's a topic we've been talking about, learning about uh, more of what the fans are going to expect or what they should expect. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about this. My name is Brady Hull. I'm the general manager of 1310 KFKA. I host a local sports talk show and I've been doing so for the past seven years. We talk national, college, um, even dive into the prep side of things too. So uh, we kind of cover it, uh, cover all the bases, so to speak. So uh, I'm honored to be a part of it and uh, looking forward to it. We're here in uh, Northern Colorado in the, uh, just a few, uh, a few uh, maybe an hour north of Denver. So uh, we kind of we've got, we've got a lot of sports to talk about for sure. And thank you, Brady. And then for anyone that has spent time around me, you've probably heard this name. Uh, Steve Livingstone uh, has been in sports his entire career, uh, from sports writer to um, uh, sports editor, I should say, to heading up sales and marketing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he's had roles, various roles in the NFL, which includes. Uh, general manager of the Scottish Claymores. He's built a soccer team from the ground up, right from the idea to launching it in the city, and then uh, was a big instrumental part of the commercial success of Louisville City Football Club. Uh, I always call him an icon in the sports business, um, and I've also had the pleasure of working uh, with him surrounding fan experience and uh, making sure that these teams and leagues um, over the last decade are doing what they can do to make sure that the fan experience is great. And um, particularly in the COVID era, we, we certainly um, will, will be looking how that evolves. So did I miss anything in my intro, Steve? I don't think so, Ken. I'm not so sure of the icon uh, uh, description. Hopefully it's, it's not not associated with icon, but uh, uh, you know, it, it's been uh, a rich and varied life in sport, I guess you would say, and uh, some people have described me as a, a jack of all trades and master of none. So, uh, you know, I, I certainly had some experience, but, uh, you know, I, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Terrific, thank you. And so we'll, we'll just jump into it. I, I'm, I'm gonna put up a little uh, poll here. Um, and if you have your browser handy, go ahead and uh, log into questionpro.io and put that four digit number in there. This is anonymous, so um, go ahead and log on there. We'll have a few people join. And while uh, you're joining, I'm gonna jump in, um, sort of talk a little bit about uh, some of what's going on. Um, certainly, um, 
as we've, you know, looked to really jump into sports, I mean, I really want it to happen. Uh, but, you know, it's sort of until the players are on the field, uh, it will be up to, you know, it will be up to us to keep people entertained uh, sort of off the field. So hopefully we're doing that here today. Um, I mean, now we're, we're, we're talking, I mentioned a couple of sports, baseball's uh, in negotiations uh, of talking about starting in July. Uh, we'll see where the, the labor neg negotiations go on there. And then um, Steve and I also, um, we, we've been discussing a, a recent poll in which, you know, it's fewer than 50% wouldn't even feel comfortable going to a game until at least 2021 or a vaccine is developed. I mean, so there, there's some dynamics here. Um, having been a witness to <laughs> player strikes and lockouts and hearing the I'll never attend again yet as soon as the sports resume, uh, the stadiums are sold out and people are happy to be there. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes you wonder now if that's going to hold true or not, uh, or if we'll ever be comfortable, shall we say, jam shoulder to shoulder with uh, 80,000 of our closest friends. So, uh, we, we've uh, got a few people logged here in here for the poll, so I'm going to go ahead and start it. Um, you are anonymous, so we're going to ask this first question. When would you feel comfortable going back to live sporting events? Go ahead and click on an answer that you feel works for you. Well, uh, a lot of you said later this year, it's, it's been interesting. Um, some of the research that we've been doing, uh, some people are very eager for sports to start this summer, whereas a lot of other events, um, movies, live music, definitely were later or into next year. So one more question for you. Which do you miss the most? And I'll try not to bias it because I, I have my own feelings on this one. <laughs> Dining at restaurants, that, that probably topped my list. Um, having three kids, sometimes it's nice to go out. <laughs> I see Brady nodding, yes. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. I, I, we'll, what will you require to attend live sports again? Now you can op enter a comment here and then as soon as you enter a comment, you can actually vote up any other ideas that you might think are interesting or compelling for you. Answers. Uh, just a couple more, and we'll see. Yeah, we'll round that out. And we'll get back and uh, tell you what those results are for that last question uh, once we analyze them. So, thank you. Uh, I, I hope that was uh, enjoyable, at least. Um, so we talked about, you know, a lot of live sports coming back, um, the idea that uh, people, I mean, really, we, we see it uh, either mid-summer to late in the year for people feeling comfortable, I mean, overwhelmingly. Uh, but we, we've seen people that say they won't attend. So Brady, I was just going to start with you. And I mean, you speak to fans on an almost an everyday basis, five days a week. Was it noon to two? It's noon to two mountain time. Yeah. yeah. We, got, we got podcasts now, so you can listen to us anytime. You can listen yeah. to us tonight if you want to. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? I mean, what, what are you hearing from fans and how do they feel about it? it it's interesting on your, your most recent poll there, too. It, it, to me, it's so interesting how it, a lot of it lines up. We conducted a similar poll um, maybe even a week or so ago asking, when would you be comfortable? And a lot of folks are still saying, you know, more into that fall side of things where it's maybe September and October. Um, it's also, we get a lot more fans saying they're kind of wanting to wait and see, um, see what, who takes that first step. And it's kind of sounds like baseball might be taking that first step on the major league side of things. And I think maybe as we see that in play and see maybe actual human beings out on a baseball diamond, 
do you see more fans getting uh, maybe a bit more confident seeing um, several several people closer together? Uh, but it is interesting for the most part. We're hearing a lot of fans, both on the college side of things and the pro side of things, saying, "Let's see how it goes this summer, and let's look at September, um, you know, September and October." Uh, at KFKA in, in Northern Colorado, we always also carry high school sports. It's very interesting to me. A lot of the high school sports fans are saying. Let's go. We want to go out and watch our kids play. We want to get out there. We don't care. We're ready to go. So we've certainly seen more of a local connect on prep side of it where fans are saying, I'm ready to go. I want to go watch games. Whereas you get to the college and pro level, yeah, it's that wait and see. It's more into the fall side of things. Steve, how about you? I, I know uh, you've uh, shared with me, and I'll, I'll put that on the screen, um, this little interesting uh, – uh, I, I don't know what to call it, module uh, in which uh, might, <laughs> sorry for the, uh, it's, it's in a different language, but this is talking about clean tech in which people can go in um, and sort of get a uh, decontaminated, is that what you'd call it? Yeah. Um, and um, decontaminated before they go into the, the stadium. So uh, you've had to deal with those logistics, Steve. Uh, what do you think of these ideas? And uh, what are you hearing about when fans want, want to go? I think it's going to be really interesting, Ken, uh, you know, this idea of the new normal uh, and what sporting events will be like, um, you know, uh, as we continue to battle COVID-19. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be what, what folks think it's going to be, uh, you know, to start off with. And, you know, I, I think the, the survey reflects that. There, there is not the confidence right now um, for, I think, fans to come out and attend events en masse. And I think um, sports teams, organisations, leagues will have to deal with that. Of course, the first step is going to be to, to get games played uh, without fans. Um, and I think that will give uh, sports organisations, clubs, venues an opportunity to apply some of this technology in, in the shape of things to come, if you like. Um, so we're going to see, um, you know, empty stadia. Uh, we're going to see a protocol, an access protocol put in place for players, officials, uh, press um, to, to limit uh, the access to events. Um, and I think once everyone's comfortable with that and they, they can get that right and keep everyone safe and, and, and not spread this virus, um, then it will move to a next step, I think, where we can consider fans. But it's not going to be 80,000 people at a venue right away, not in my opinion anyway. I think, if anything, they'll start off with a smaller number, maybe 25%, um, where it's a more controllable um, you know, unit of fans that are coming into the stadium. But think about it. Think about all the things that are going to have to be put in place um, to develop this idea of confidence and safety for the fans attending. So that can be everything from, you know, the access control protocol. So taking fans' temperatures as they're coming in, uh, desanitizing them, if you like, in terms of, uh, you know, what we've seen at some of these pods, uh, making sure that there's not choke points in the stadium, keeping people six feet apart, um, looking at concessions, uh, you know, uh, how, how do you uh, supply concessions in a way that is going to keep people safe? Um, and again, I'm, I'm hearing a lot in the industry about new technologies being applied to deal with these, these, these critical questions. So it's everything from, you know, infrared monitoring. Um, there's even a, a system where they can track fans in real time to make sure they're not grouping together, in which case you would then deploy staff to go and break those people up. Um, it's not just about, you know, separating people in seats. Um, it's do you allow access to other parts of the stadium? Uh, and it will be interesting to see how things develop. The Bundesliga is, is starting this weekend. I think there'll be a lot of eyes on, on German soccer. Um, and I think Europe will be a little bit more um, kind of uh, organised in, in this capacity because they've been having to do this for years. Uh, they've been, particularly at, at large sporting events and soccer events in particular, where they've had to keep fans separated due to violence um, issues. Um, you know, it, in Europe, it's not uncommon for you to be designated a gate that you have to enter by. 
uh, and then you're not allowed access around the stadium concourse during during the event. And if you're a visiting fan as well, you have to wait in the stadium until everybody has left before you can go out. So I can see a lot of these protocols and a lot of this approach being implemented here in the US. And it will be interesting to see how US sports fans kind of adopt that, you know, in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Uh, you know, are, are they going to stand for that? Um, but again, to be safe, these protocols will have to be put in place. Um, you know, everything from cleaning the stadium as well after the event. I've seen ideas where they have drones come down and clean seats and, and all that sort of thing. So it's going to be a, a, a new world um, that we're going to be entering into. And, and it will be interesting to see how individual leagues teams deal with it. But then how the fans are going to respond to that as well in terms of, of their experience. Well, and I mean, we, we're talking about fans. I, I, I read about Bundesliga, and that was I was, I was going to bring that one up next as well, um, where um, they're going to play in empty stadiums to start. Um, I thought one of the novel ideas is you can actually, uh, someone's talking about buying a cardboard cutout of yourself that you can place in the seat as a, um, I guess, a hypothetical supporter while you're watching at home. Um, but, you know, I mean, realistically, when we start talking about <clears throat> the business side of sport, I mean, uh, you know, there's, there's three places where that money comes from. I mean, it's, 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 it's sponsorships, it's TV rights, and it's what we call the stadium revenue, I'll call it, uh, which could be ticket sales and concessions. And I mean, when you're taking out, you know, a chunk of that, you know, I can, I can see, you know, short term, no fans in seats. I get it. At one extreme, I'm, I'm, I thought of this scenario where this terrible idea where each and every seat has an advertisement in it. So as the cameras pan around the stadium, instead of seeing Ken sitting in his seats there in section 342, um, you'll just see an advertisement there. And maybe I, I have the first rights to buy that advertisement, but, um, you know, al almost like bidding for AdWords, um, you know, when, when you do that and, and some of the ad online advertising sites where you, hey, I'm, I'm going to bid, bid on it. And the other extreme, I mean, you know, the team business owners thinking short-term loss might return, you know, might be in return for long-term fan gains. I mean, long-term uh, good graces of the fans. So they don't try to make up the revenue, rather they just try to give them the entertainment and then, hey, we'll make up for it in the, you know, the long run. I'm, you know, like every extreme, I'm sure it's going to be somewhere in between, but I mean, I won't name names, but I know, Steve, you've had to deal with near empty stadiums um, as well as overwhelming sellout demand at times. Uh, so, I mean, how do you think the business side will work with the, you know, with the fan experience perspective in the short term and the long term? I mean, what's the new normal? Well, I think it, it comes back to, to building that idea of trust and safety for the fans. Um, we are not going to be able to get people back in stadia unless they're confident and comfortable to do so. And then I think the other um, kind of factor will be once they do start attending, um, how is this all going to impact on their, their fan experience? Um, nobody wants to go and have a kind of lousy time at a stadium because they have to queue for hours to have a, a temperature check um, or, uh, you know, are, are limited to what they can do in the stadium. I think uh, aspects like, um, you know, cashless stadiums are, are going to become more prevalent. Uh, sports have been moving towards that for a long time now, but now there's this kind of added urgency. Uh, so cashless, contactless. Uh, so when fans do, um, you know, come to, to an event, you know, I, I think we'll see it, it will be impossible to use cash because people won't want to kind of hand things off in those transactions. Um, so again, that goes, goes back to this kind of this new normal, if you like, and, and what we should expect at sporting events. Um, you know, one thing, and I think I, I sent you something on this last week, Ken, uh, you know, golf uh, tournaments, that's going to be an interesting one too, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how they keep fans apart, um, or patrons, I guess, as they call them in golf, uh, you know, on the golf course. Um, so there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of technology that's been applied to that so that they can track groupings of people in real time and then again go and go and break them up. Um, so it, it, that, that's, that's going to be a, you know, a challenge. I think also uh, you mentioned sponsorship. Um, 
uh, you know, we're already seeing um, a number of sponsors uh, wanting to renegotiate their deals. Uh, I, I've got no doubt my colleagues in the sports industry have been doing everything they can to keep sponsors um, on board, uh, refunding them, giving them added value. Uh, that's why, you know, to a great extent, they've come up with a, a lot more content, um, you know, digitally, not only to engage with the fans, but to provide um, vehicles for sponsors to, to get some value. Uh, so I, again, um, I, I think the, the bigger sports, um, the major major leagues will be fine. They may lose some sponsors, but where this is going to hurt will be in minor sport. Um, I, I think it will be difficult for for those minor sports to hang on to the the, the, the sponsors that, 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 that they've been used to in the past. And we may see some shrinkage in that area too. Good point. Um, so, Brady, I mean, as a member of the media and also a fan uh, of some of the same teams that I'm a fan of, so um, what do you think the new normal will be for fan experience? I mean, we sports in 2021 will be probably 100 years different than sports in 2019, so yeah. what's your perspective? Yeah, it's interesting. As Steve was mentioning, um, will fans want to go to these games, even when they can, to wait in long lines to get their temperature checked? Uh, a school just a few minutes north of me, uh, we cover a lot, the uh, Colorado State University. I know there was a big deal made about their, when their new stadium was uh, built three years ago. They had a bag rule, right? You had to have a, a see-through bag, and that that was a, I mean, my goodness, that was a huge concern. People were frustrated with that. You had to get your bags checked. Um, fans wanted to bring in these, these helmets that weren't necessarily regulation, but they wanted to wear them during the game. They couldn't bring those in. I mean, that was a huge discussion. That was an issue. And so my brain, as Steve's talking, starts going, wow, if we had issues with bag checks, um, what's it going to be like if somebody's in line having to go through and get a temperature check, uh, making sure you sanitize, wash your hands. You're going to test the fans' patience. And I, that's where I think Steve's correct. You know, um, you're, going to, you're going to have to gauge this, letting a few people in at a time and see how this goes. Um, going to games can sometimes be nuts. There was an avalanche game at, uh, can you know this, at, at Air Force recently. <laughs> the traffic oh, yeah. was, was absolutely insane. People were uh, absolutely, they were floored because it took forever to get out of there. I, I wonder, is this going to slow things down? Are people going to be getting out of stadiums? I mean, it already can take you an hour, two hours, depending on the game, to get out of the parking lot if it's a crazy game and it's sold out. So I, those are things that I, I, I'm certainly wondering about. Um, the new normal, patience, I suppose. <laughs> At the end of the day, fans are going to have to really practice patience or um, you're going to see maybe some fans leave a little bit earlier, try to, try to level that out and get out of there soon. So um, that, that's my biggest takeaway when I think of the new normal is how fans want to feel comfortable. They want to feel safe, but you know, how much patience are they willing to, um, are they willing to showcase at these games when we were asked to do a heck of a lot more than a simple back check? And yeah. Ken, to, to Brady's point there, I, I think going to a sporting event, sadly, is going to be a lot like going to the airport. Um, you know, there's, there's points in our journey as we are traveling, and you know very well, Ken, be, being a, a frequent flyer, um, where, you know, the, you're, there's a security check. You, you have to line up to, to, to put your bag in. You then, you know, go through the process. You get to the plane. You line up to get onto the plane. You then find your seat on the plane. Attending a sporting event is going to be very similar to that. Um, and the, there's, there's going to have to be screening as fans come in. You don't want to be end up, you know, sitting next to someone with a, a temperature of 105 degrees, which is going to be interesting in places like Florida. You know, how, how do you, how do you, uh, you know, figure out if the person's actually sick or just too hot? Um, you know, so, so that's going to be interesting. Um, you know, and, you know, think airports, I think, is, 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 is what the situation is going to be. And then taking it a step further, do sports teams then start applying things like contact tracing? So, for example, if they do find someone coming through the line uh, and, they're, and they're screened off and it's found out later on that they do have the virus, um, you know, how many, how many people do you then need to trace and contact? Um, I, I know in Ohio... Um, they, they've put uh, 
some restrictions on events and they expect um, you know some kind of report back from the events on how they are dealing with this so there will be analytics in terms of how many people came to the event what gatherings took place did anybody get sick is their contract contract tracing going on you know should should sports teams pre-scan fans before they come to, to an event so for example you know when i go to my uh, my doctor's office now two days before i go to my appointment i get a questionnaire that asks me you know am i feeling okay uh you know do i have a temperature have i been in contact with anybody else that's that's sick all of that sort of stuff and again, it's, it's risk mitigation and, and limiting the possibility of spreading this virus. And I'm afraid it's something that sports teams are going to have to look at. So, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot to think about here. And uh, I think, um, you know, this is what the, the major leagues are looking at right now. How can they figure all of this out to make sure that they're presenting an event that, that is safe? And then secondly, um, how, do you, how do you minimize the impact on that fan experience? Because again if it sucks you know for, for if it's like flying people aren't going to want to come back yeah and i think um uh, you know it's a good analogy for flying because a lot of the a lot of the same things that you go through for flying you we were already sort of doing that for sports to some extent you go through metal detectors you you know you basically sign away all your rights when you buy that ticket saying you know i have absolutely no rights and uh, I know I was just speaking to some tourist attractions um, a couple hours ago when they were talking about liability. You know, how much are they liable versus the, you know, the person who's attending is the fan liable for, you know, bringing, you know, bringing something in that everyone can get sick from. And um, so it, it definitely I, I think, has a new yeah, dynamic. I think you'll see again in, in that respect, the language on the back of the ticket will change. You know, if you ever attend a sporting event and you, and you take a look at the back of the ticket, it, it, leads, it reads like uh, some kind of legal document in terms of um, what the liabilities are. Uh, so th those will have to be changed as well to include, you know, um, disease. Yeah. Well, there's no tickets anymore. It's all mobile now. Of course. <laughs> and, and again, to, to a great extent, uh, sport was moving down the right road in terms of this, uh, from, uh, you know, uh, ticketless entry to cashless stadia to, um, uh, you know, a season ticket cards where, uh, and even face recognition, I think, is going to be a, a, the next step in that. It will be interesting to see how they do face recognition with everybody wearing masks, but um, the technology is already there. And again, you know, I think some of the technology that, that has developed um, in the, even in the last six months, um, uh, you know, I, as this as this virus has has continued to spread around the world, it is is absolutely fascinating. And, and, and you know how um, you know airport technology is going to be implemented in stadium technology. They even have this thing now called lidar. Never heard of it before. Uh, a bit like radar, but it's three D three D imaging for fans in the stadium, so that again you can look at any point in the stadium and see if people are grouping too much. So, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where, where the technology goes on this. Definitely. Um, and I've, I've seen even the, um, uh, Steve, you and I spent some time with uh, a company last year at a, one of the sport conferences that were talking about tracking people through. I mean, everything is being tracked from uh, putting, put, putting little, not little nodes into the toilet paper roll so you know when it's actually running out to you know knowing where you know you have 20 people in line to too many people on the escalator you, know, you name it so um sort of switching a little bit um you know i i, I cross crossroads of what i've done i mean i you both work in the world of sports it's fun it's exciting um Outside businesses are their clients, their sponsors, and you know, I, one of those areas. I, I tell people this is not the time to sit back and reflect; rather, time to talk to your customers. And uh, we, we've seen a lot of that. Uh, we've seen a lot of surveying going on with uh, whether it's fan experience. Uh, I mentioned tourist attractions. Uh, we're doing a huge nationwide survey with a bunch of tourist attractions. Um, 
and talking to them and finding out a what makes them comfortable b what they're talking about and you know finally what's going to pull them back in um as one friend said to me you know you can use this time to keep up or fall behind but i mean pick any industry or any type of client um and and you could see you know these actions of the leagues are, are going to be business lessons for them i mean i can see translating uh, what happens at a stadium uh, to suddenly uh, Black Friday sales, um, retail. Um, I, <laughs> I, I've, I've already heard rumors that you might have similar temperature checks going into a bank, which, you know, um, strange enough for me, the strangest thing I had to have happen this spring is when I got to go into a bank wearing sunglasses and a face mask because that's what they required of me. So, I mean, you know, what, what are some of these lessons? I mean, pick any industry, any type of, you know, any type of company and um, what, what should they be learning, Steve? Okay, and you know, again, I think it comes back to, to that interaction with the fan and, uh, you know, your point of kind of getting out in front of it. Um, it it's gonna be all about reducing contact, but increasing touch points, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, loyalty programs are, are gonna become increasingly important. Um, sports organizations that have adopted those in the past and looked at other um, lines of business like the hotel industry and like the airline industry uh, will be steps ahead in, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to engage with their fans through their loyalty programs. It, it may even be a case of, uh, you know, rewarding fans for being brave enough to come out and attend mm -hmm. games, you know, through that, through that loyalty program. I think also social media content is going to be really important going forward. We're already seeing that. Um, the rise of esports is becoming, um, it's almost like the situation was made for esports. Um, and, you know, the extension of, of sporting brands to, to, to the esport realm, if you like. Um, additional web interaction. Uh, you, you know, how, how you interact with the fan during the event if the fan is not at the event. Um, so that's going to be interesting as well. How, how, you, uh, how you engage uh, during those events. Is there opportunities for special access, for example, uh, for a season ticket holder uh, uh, who is, uh, you know, could be brought in as a special guest sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, further than that, uh, and I think this echoes across all industry right now, uh, particularly retail, but um, contactless payment, um, you know, how will that be implemented? Uh, and I think the sports business is looking to the retail industry, um, you know, to follow on, um, you know, what they've been doing in, in, that, in that realm for, for years. So I, again, I think um, going to a sporting event will become less and less um, likely to be able to use cash in the stadium and it will be more, um, you know, contactless or using your credit card or using, you know, a, a, a season ticket holder card to, to, to get what you need to get inside the stadium. And I, I, I think the VIP aspect, I, I was, I was fortunate enough to participate uh, as a, uh, on, as a representative of the Denver Broncos for the virtual NFL draft. So if you recorded it uh, on day one, you can actually see me in the background cheering as they announce the draft pick. So there are opportunities to increase that fan experience. However, you know, in that case, you, you, you know, they brought in roughly 30 fans per team, which is, you know, you, you really can't, you, know, you can't replicate that on a, uh, a full scale 80,000 seat stadium kind of thing. But uh, at the same time, um, it, it was an opportunity for them to bring in sponsors. Um, I, I, you know, in addition to participating, the, the sponsors were, um, sharing gifts with people that even uh, wanted to participate, that signed up for participation. So um, that was interesting. So Brady, uh, what do you think the business can learn? And you, you work with a lot of the local businesses as well that sponsor um, both your radio shows and the advertising as well as the local teams. Sure. Yeah, I mean, on the business side of things, you know, local businesses, restaurants, for example, here in, uh, in our neck of the woods, you know, restaurants are, are still on, on, on a pretty tight, uh, strict, strict demands, you know, they can do curbside uh, pickup and delivery. Um, they're still shutting down in, uh, as far as going in, dine in. You've seen restaurants get creative. Um, a few of these local restaurants here in uh, Greeley and Fort Collins 
you know, they're utilizing their master chefs, they're teaching classes, they're doing online things now where they're teaching people at home, hey, for a certain amount of dollars, you can watch us create this gourmet cheeseburger or whatever. I'm sure there's a lot, uh, a lot bigger meals than just a burger. But uh, there's a lot of those things going on, unique uh, meals that we're creating, you know, for Mother's Day, things like that. So I've seen that on the local side, a lot of innovative business, but you talked about the NFL draft. That was where I was going to go. Um, it, I mean, well done. It was phenomenal. I figured for sure there was going to be some, some hiccups there, but I think a lot of fans were, were, were very, you know, Roger Goodell is, let's face it, very controversial character. A lot of fans like to boo him, but I think a lot of fans kind of liked seeing Roger Goodell in his, in his living, living room, uh, announcing picks, turning around to the fans, piping in the boos. I, I, I think, I think suddenly we found another connection point there. Uh, and as you mentioned, there's, there's, are those sponsorable items down the road? Are there more interactions that we can do? Um, can the combine, can we, can we utilize more of a fan interaction there? I think, and again, we'll talk about this with our takeaways, but I think you're seeing a lot of athletes, a lot of coaches, a lot of general managers really looking at the fans thinking, wow, more than ever, these fans really make up what we do. How do we increase that? How do we grow that into a, a real fan experience rather than just go to a game or watch practice or, 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 or see training camp and things like that? So I, I think things will change in that, in that regard as far as being innovative and just new ways to reach out to the fans and massive fans too. Not, you know, when, when, a, when a contest to go take a tour of a stadium, um, but, but really speaking to those fans where they can feel really involved in that process. Esports, playing video games with, these athletes, that has been a huge thing. I, I've been following along Ronda Rousey for a, for a long time of what she's doing. She's playing video games with, uh, with fans quite often. And I think that you're going to see sports um, maybe create some kind of sponsorship packages out of that as well. So I'm very curious to see how innovative that process will, beca will become because we saw that with the NFL draft. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this, this uh, form we're on, even Zoom, I mean, that it, it allows – people to become more connected. I mean, social media certainly brought the fans one step closer to their favorite players, their favorite stars. And I think this could have that potential, the flip side of it. Um, uh, <laughs> you might not be able to watch them in person. Um, you might be only watching them on TV. And then, you know, I mean, I, I, I normally don't jump to questions here, but this was a good question as we, we sort of, you know, wrap up some of our overall thoughts. I mean, someone said, you know, the economy ta tanks, you know, are, is anyone going to be able to afford tickets? But I, I think the bigger question there is, you know, like, would teams go ahead and empty half the stadium and double the ticket prices or just half the stadium and expect that, you know, ticket prices remain the same and they'll cut the revenue? And um, uh, the comment at the end is, that's the end of the $30 million contracts, which I might disagree with because I still think we're going to see, you know, players getting the $40 million contracts in the next year, shall I say. You know, I'm, I'm not a medical person, but at some point, um, you know, somebody's going to come up with a vaccine for this thing. Um, so I don't see this as being in, in perpetuity, if you like. Um, uh, I, I think it's it's um, something that the ownership um, and the leagues will, will be taking on the chin right now. Uh, it, there's going to be huge losses. But any teams that, that, that do decide to double the price of a ticket and half the attendance or quarter of the attendance or whatever, that would be a huge mistake. I think now more than, than any time, um, sports teams are going to have to think, you know, um, take, have, have, take a kind of wider, uh, wider view on this thing. Um, and the, the sports teams that will come out of this successfully will be the ones that have engaged with their fans properly. Um, I think trust is going to be a real big issue between clubs and fans as well, particularly if we, we then go back to this idea of, uh, you know, everybody getting scanned and, you know, you'll have to give information and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, fans are going to have to trust their sports teams. Um, and I think it's, the onus is going to be on the teams themselves to work with the fans, uh, to engage with the fans, to keep the fans informed, uh, to, to listen to ideas from the fans uh, to get uh, feedback from the fans after events through live surveys or whatever. The teams that do a better job of that, that do a better job of building that trust, that level of safety at, at their venues, and, and show essentially that they care about the fans and are not out there to fleece them, um, those are the ones that are going to come out of this a lot better. 
Brady, uh, your thoughts, and I, I'm putting on the screen our, our sort of after quiz before we jump into the questions. So if you want to start logging into questionpro.io and enter that number, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, Brady. I mean, the, you know, we're observers, we're on the outside, we're not sitting in the, the boardrooms, at least I'm not. Um, maybe the two of you have some secret uh, knowledge, but, uh, you know, what's, what's the big thing from a positive, big thing from a negative? Uh, that's going to change the fan experience. Just the one thought on each side. I like to pretend I have some inside knowledge, but <laughs> um, I, I think the positive again. I kind of alluded to this earlier. Is is I think you know not to say athletes and coaches and GMs weren't appreciative of the fans before. You know they say the right things, but I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see more of that when, when everything is socially acceptable to get closer and sign autographs and do all that. I, I could certainly see that being a, a case of where maybe more players for perhaps it's a short time, perhaps, perhaps it's short term. Um, but we're, we're players, you know, really uh, try to get involved with those fans where maybe they stay after a little bit longer to sign autographs. I know growing up as a sports fan, that meant the world to me. Do we start to see more of those cases? Uh, a, a negative, and I think this really just goes back to the whole process, but I do agree with Steve. Eventually things will round out as, as, as you know, do, medical experts, doctors uh, continue to work. There's some brilliant minds out there. Um, but I do think it in the short term, whatever that looks like, a year, two years, three years, there will be a negative side of it as far as fans, again, with the patience factor is, is can they go to games and simply say instead of a three hour, four hour day, we're looking at the six, seven hour day. And that I got to tell you, as we all know, with families and a lot going on, that's an entire, that's an entire day out of your week. So now you have to ask those questions. Is that something that fans will do? And is that going to ultimately be a giant negative? So those, those are kind of my big takeaways. I think fan appreciation, a positive on all accounts. And then the negative again is, is how, um, how much of an event, how much of an airport feel will these games truly have to them? Steve, you're one big pro and con moving into the near well, future. I, you know, I would agree with Brady. I think the the pro is the the opportunity to, and I've, I've painted a pretty dark picture of, of how, how it's going to be <laughs> going to sporting events, but uh, it's really going to be up to the fans uh, whether they opt into this or not. Uh, and it'll be up to the teams of, of, of how how easy they can make it. And they can, the work that they're doing right now will make life a lot easier if they get it right. Um, the, the negative is going to be just the protocol and the procedure that, that fans are going to have to go through to be a live sporting event. There's, there's probably no way around it, uh, and, and it will be different. I, I mean, I, I think the other negative will be for the competitors, the players who are going to start you know, playing in empty stadia. That's going to be weird. Um, and, and again, you know, a, a lot of athletes that I've spoken to in my career um, allude to the fact that they kind of feed off the, the noise from the crowd and the passion from the crowd, if you like. And, um, you know, particularly in games like football and soccer, uh, you know, the, they really tap into that, that kind of fan atmosphere, if you like. That's going to be difficult for them to, to, to deal with, I think, initially. Um, so that, those are the negatives. But I think the positives, again, are, are just opportunities, opportunities to improve the fan experience, even, you know, despite the challenges. And then opportunities to increase the fan engagement, as, as Brady says. So being able to connect with the fans in a caring way, probably more than, than sports. And I think, uh, looks like Steve was up there. And I, I, I think I'll add quickly to that one. Um, you know, opportunities, this, this goes across a lot of businesses. There's an opportunity to sort of reinvent yourself. Um, and this goes beyond sport, but you know, opportunity to bring a new perspective, a new uh, a new look to it. So, Brady, I know you're running a cr up against the clock because you have a radio show in a few minutes here. So, uh, we're gonna let Brady go. Uh, if there are some specific questions to Brady for Brady, we'll um, we'll, we'll certainly bring those up and we'll, we'll be answering them after. But I'll let Brady go. I'm gonna start the quiz. Thank you, Brady, for joining. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure you get there on time to uh, start your broadcast. So, uh, I'll start the the quiz and. Uh, let Brady go. And so the quiz, who, which sport recently conducted an event without fans in attendance?
All of these are here. Oh, good. Uh, almost everyone got it right. Uh, we'll, we'll quickly move on so no one will see who got it wrong. Uh, which lacrosse league announced a tournament tied to sports betting with Genius Deal? Premier Lacrosse League. I mean, we've got uh, gold up there running uh, way ahead on, in terms of time, um, getting all the answers right and speed counts. Steve was a general manager for which team? And Esther, while I'm running this, I hope you're, you're ready with a list of questions. Oh, uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Scottish Claymores. That is the correct answer. He was head of marketing uh, for the Jaguars. Which AFC team, West team, did Ken represent at the virtual NFL 2020 draft? Most of you got that. KGN taking the lead. Sarah not too far behind. And one more, which university did Brady attend? See some quick answers. Everyone was listening, I love that. So I did see uh, a question that came across the sort of the chat. University of Northern Colorado split there as well. Um, KGN, way to go, good job. Uh, ran out with the 100% uh, correct. So um, I did uh, want to start with that question I saw on the chat. It mentioned the Spanish flu and the pandemic uh, in 1918 um, and how long it took for things to get sort of restarted there. Now, granted, we were in a very different world in 1918. Um, the, um, <laughs> we weren't quite as densely populated even in the big metro areas. Um, I think the second factor in that, um, that time in 1918 is that we ended up in a world war, uh, which sort of, I'll say, distributed the population even more, putting hundreds of thousand troops. Um, and what was interesting is upon victory of that war, uh, pretty much everyone was in a celebratory mode. And so sports and group activities became a huge thing. It actually created a, a bit of a, a problem because there was some resurgence in illnesses. Uh, but you know, it, it's sometimes things like that that bring people together. So hopefully I address that question a little bit. Um, Esther, did, did you have some more questions that came up? Yes, I've got a, f uh, a few more questions here from the audience. Uh, Philomena asks, could you comment on how the culture of the sports fans say, uh, Canadian minor hockey versus American baseball versus Asian uh, Jai, Jai Ali, probably do not, I'm not saying that right, uh, mm -hmm. weigh in on what business would need to take note of as we come out of COVID and resume sports slowly. Well, I, I think, I mean, Steve mentioned that there's a lot of things that businesses do that sports teams follow and a lot of things that sports teams do that businesses follow. Um, I think up and down the chain, I, I think you're just going to see a different experience. Um, I think there's a, um, I mean, we, we, we experience it in just grocery shopping now. So there's a limit in uh, how many people can go in at a time. The lines uh, are different. I, I will share, I, I've actually taken, taken two flights in this um, COVID era, which, you know, I guess if I travel as much as I do, it, it's hard to avoid flights, but uh, these ones were necessary. Um, and the, the experience was vastly different uh, and, and not in the worst way either. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm a member of CLEAR. Um, so I think we're gonna see a lot more things like CLEAR pop up. Uh, Steve mentioned you know, getting a screening before you actually ever make it to the stadium. Um, so I think there might be things like a like a clear where you actually show up at the stadium, show your your certificate of health, I'll call it, 
uh, and you're able to go in, pass in freely. Um, I think there's going to be other things that people aren't going to particularly like, and I think it's going to span business as well as sports, uh, which is sort of that contact tracing in the short ter term. Um, just knowing who you've come across, knowing um, if, you know, if I had the illness and I went to a place that they can inform everyone that you're now under a 14 day quarantine until um, you're better. <laughs> so. That's a, that's a good one. Um, another question from filling in a, what organizations are sports companies consulting when they're considering the rights of fans with privacy, um, with all this uh, checking of everything? Like well, temperature, not, gathering, contact tracing. I know, I, I know Steve could probably address this one pretty well, but, but basically uh, what he mentioned on the back of the ticket, you've given up all your rights, essentially. You've given up the right to privacy. You've given up the right to be able to um, uh, sue, for example. I mean, it, any, any more so than if you got hit by a foul ball, um, if someone came in and was sick and you got sick as a result, um, you, you've sort of surrendered your rights in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I think the, the underlying um, part of this is how do they make you feel comfortable with it, uh, which is going to be a whole other aspect of it. Because I think uh, if, I, if I look back at mobile ticketing uh, and when that was rolled out in the NFL, it was just basically they said every team has to do it. Um, and as a result, you know, you had to have an app on your phone. You had to allow them to track you and trace you and know when that you're in that app. No, you know, there's a lot of data that they actually collect. And um, so it's basically your, uh, I'll call it giving up your rights as you um, enter in that contract. And Ken, I don't know if you can hear me. I, yep. I kind of get cut off there for a little while, but glad to be back. Um, you know, I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the sports teams are working right now with uh, repu reputable, um, you know, data uh, companies. Uh, so, uh, and sports teams are are subject to uh, all of the data laws that, that any other industry is subject to. Uh, so, uh, I think generally, um, you know, the, the the control of that data, the use of that data. Um, it's going to be very important and again I think it's going to be important for sports teams organizations to have some transparency with their fans uh, to also make sure that the fans are opting in um, because otherwise you know there's, there's, there's serious repercussions in terms of the FCC etc so um, you know I, I would say generally across the board all of the major league teams uh, are aware of this and I think they'll be very careful again it's all part of that idea of how if, if the data is being used to, uh, you know, supply to a third party, for example, that's going to destroy the trust between the fan and, and the club. And, uh, you know, one thing that sports um, organizations have got going for them, probably more so than, than any other industry, is, is that loyalty um, and that, that degree of, uh, of passion and feeling that, uh, that their customers, their fans uh, have for their brand. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks like we, yeah, we do. Um, I got a question from uh, Larissa. Do you see VR being a potential solution? Um, trying to, uh, if we're talking about part, as part of the fan engagement side of it, fan experience side, uh, I could certainly see, um, I don't mean to call out a, a, any company specifically, but uh, Intel uh, has been doing the uh, true view, I believe it's called, uh, in which, you know, they have these 360 degree views of the stadium and they have uh, 65 cameras that are 4K quality. Um, it's a little far off, uh, but I can imagine um, sitting there with my VR gear on my head and feeling like I'm in a stadium based on a certain perspective. But at the moment, it feels like it'd be still a few years off because if I recall correctly, just to stream about a minute of that true view data, I think it was about a terabyte of data that was being read and a video that was being pulled in. And I think, I think maybe uh, VR has some limitations, but 
certainly augmented reality, uh, we're going to see that. But I think we're already, um, you know, seeing that. Um, if you watch the Korean baseball that's coming up, they've they've been tinkering with this idea of, uh, you know, uh, beaming fans into the stadium, if you like, on the broadcast. So it's empty seats in reality, but the augmented reality that we're seeing on screen, a bit like they do with the LED uh, advertising, is we, we're seeing fans in, in, in the stands, even though they don't exist, um, you know, to create this kind of better um, uh, experience for the viewer, if you like. So um, I think we'll definitely see a lot of the augmented reality, and that could include, you know, sponsor messaging, um, you know, beamed onto sections of the stadium, et cetera. Uh, I think that's, that's definitely something that's going to happen. Okay, great. I love that answer. And I, I do agree. I think, you know, augmented reality is the first step until we can get to the virtual reality. Um, another question here. Um, sports are a huge revenue generator for hotels and airlines and travel and tourism. Do you see any partnering of these industries to work together to present a united front on safety and security to increase consumer confidence and drive sales and revenue? Wow, um, that'll that'll be an interesting one to see. Your uh, the the person asking the question is correct. I mean, the partnerships there. Um, we're seeing, um, as I mentioned, certainly there were already some partnerships that were in existence uh, to really um, bolster uh, local attendance. Shall I say? You know, stay at this hotel, and you know, you can get a discount. I think. The travel industry is probably going to be hit harder than the sports industry, even because um, you know travel is based on you 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 have what we call the butts in seats. I mean, stadiums are one third of the revenue uh, for sports teams. I shouldn't say one third; they're one third of the type of revenue. But they still have those other revenue streams that they can benefit from. Um, I could see um, some partnerships working. Um, say if you're attached to a uh, if you're a hotel attached to a stadium you might, might be able to do they hey we can pre-screen you before you go in the stadium um, but uh, you know an airline's not going to be able to do that because they can't guarantee you didn't come in contact with someone between the airport and the hotel the hotel and the stadium and Steve your thoughts I mean you you've dealt with a lot of business partnerships yeah. and sponsorships I think it, I think if I'm a sponsorship guy working with a, a major league team right now, I am trying to talk to uh, companies like Clear. I'm trying to talk to uh, you know companies that that have technology like like the pods um, that that you showed earlier. Um, you know, there's obviously going to be a huge cost uh, to um, equipping venues and changing venues to to be compatible with the with the new required protocol. So. Uh, you know, a, a way for for sports teams to offset that that cost would be to develop uh, partnerships and sponsorship relationships with companies like Clear, for example. Um, you know, the, these uh, these units themselves aren't cheap. You know, you're probably talking about thirty to fifty thousand dollars per unit. Uh, so that's a significant uh, spend for for sports clubs. So being able to um, uh, you know uh, barter that arrangement uh, through a sponsorship. Um, would probably be a smart way, way to go. I think also there's existing relationships already. If you look at the NFL, the NBA, uh, NHL, they all have relationships with airlines, with uh, hotels, um, uh, with restaurants, etc. Uh, and if they're if they're being smart about it, they're already partnering with those 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 partners uh, to answer their questions and to and to identify best practice in terms of how they're going to implement it at their venues and stadia. Uh, so I think that's probably already going on. Uh, but, you know, it would be smart of them to, uh, uh, to, to follow that track. And, and again, just by keeping the cost down, at least, uh, that's certainly a way of doing it. I know we're at the top of the hour. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Brady. I know he's already starting his radio show, so he's not hearing this. And uh, thank you, Esther, for um, helping manage all this for us. And thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you.